You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, a semi-weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your host, Steph, on Wednesday mornings to chat about seasons, Sabbaths, and all new witchcraft topics to help you make your life more magical. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and I have a guest here with me today. We are going to talk about a bunch of stuff, but most importantly, her newest book. So I'm going to turn it over to her so she can introduce herself and let you know where you can find her online. Hi, I am Amanda Lovelace. Um, Most people know me as a poet. I've written collections like The Princess Saves Herself in this one, The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one, among a bunch of others. But I recently made my debut into the book witchery side of things with Make Your Own Magic, which just came out last month. And you can find me on social media in most places at Lady Book Mad. Awesome. And your book, I already read, so much fun, such a great resource for beginners. What made you decide to go into the witchy book space? Thank you. So it actually sort of happened accidentally. It was like sort of like a snowball effect. So when I was done with my first poetry series or or when I was just getting done with it, I was talking with my publisher and I was like, maybe we should do like a pre-order incentive and we can make like, um, like fake little tarot cards uh, called the princess, the witch, the mermaid, which is like every book title has those mythical creatures in it. Um, But they were actually like, what if we did a tarot deck instead? And I was like, that's cool. That eventually turned into an Oracle deck, Believe in Your Own Magic. And then after that Oracle deck came out, which I had no idea like how successful it was going to be. Like so many more people loved that deck and got that deck than I ever thought possible. I kept getting questions all over like my social medias and my email asking me um you know aside from using this deck how can I be a witch like how can I get into witchcraft and it was sort of overwhelming it's like it's so hard to explain to in just one conversation how you can start practicing so that's when I started formulating um a little plan to write a beginner's witchcraft guide and eventually a couple years later um here we are with make your own magic (laughs) I love that. I think the best books come out that way where it was just a complete accident and all of a sudden things started snowballing for you. It's very exciting. Yeah, it was just like very natural how things happened. And yeah, I can't believe that I'm here. I'm so excited that this book is out in the world now. It is very exciting because, you know, you already are published, but this is like a completely different realm for you. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like having your first baby all over again. Yeah, it's like I got my toes wet a little bit with the decks, but this is like it's a totally different like ball game. Like it's the most I've ever written for a book because my poetry is pretty short because it's modern poetry. So it was a totally new way of writing for me. And it was a bit of a challenge, but it was one that um, really warmed me up to the genre. And I would really like to write more in it. Oh, I would very much look forward to that. I hope you do. Yeah, me too. (laughs) So for newbies who aren't familiar with this book yet, since it did just come out, uh, what can readers expect? Um, So it was very much in my mind that we're sort of in a modern witchcraft renaissance. And by the time I was writing my book, there were already a ton of new, amazing beginners books coming out. Um, But and I still read beginner's books, even though I'm years into this thing. Oh, and I I pretty much wanted to write the book that I wish that I had and include things that maybe I found missing from other books. Not that there's anything wrong with those books, just more like make it more me, like with the poetry or explaining certain things that we take for granted. Like, for example, mentioning like maybe do some research before you put your crystals out in the sun Or maybe don't put it in your bra if you wear one because it can give it water damage. And like things like that. I really wanted to infuse it with things that I just wasn't seeing anywhere else. And I really appreciate about your book that it's like interactive. 
Is it? Is mm. that the right? They right word? Yeah. But because like a lot of beginner books um, read more textbook. And that can be really good. You get a lot of great information that way, but sometimes it can feel like studying. And for people who are out of school or didn't like school, that's maybe not exactly what they're looking for in a book that like they feel like they're doing homework. And in your book, it really feels like an interactive experience because you have so many like different like you said the poems, but also you have like great journal prompts, Mm -hmm. like something to work with along the way. Yeah, that was one of the things that was most important to me was, I forgot to mention that, the journal prompts. Um, They're a way not only of building like your own personal book of shadows slash quimoir, but um, I really wanted this book to feel kind of like my poetry books, where it feels like a personal experience alongside the reader. And I found that not just writing poetry, but including the prompts gave me a way to like relate back to the reader and then the reader relate back to me. I love that. I think that's a great way to learn because it helps me too. That's always how I learned best in school was doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. So the fact that like you present the information, but then you have like, here's how you can take it further. And here's something you should journal on to figure out your own feelings about something. Yeah, for sure. And I, I really appreciate that. Like even, yeah, like you said, I, I still read beginner books all the time yeah, all the time <laughs> I'm, I'm getting all I get requests all the time of like what do you where do you start like what beginner books so I have to you know read them so I know what to recommend <laughs> so but I always still find information in beginner books that I didn't necessarily know or haven't thought about in a long time like you said like the researching for the crystals and like knowing which ones are water safe or sun safe. And yeah, that's true. That's information you need as a beginner. But I think after you've been practicing for so long, you just kind of already know because you work with the same crystals over and over again. And you kind of forget that somewhere along the way you mm-hmm. had to learn that information. Yeah. And um, I'm hoping that, that although this book was written with beginners in mind, that, you know, people like us who still enjoy reading beginners books, they'll find like new perspectives on things because that is what I love about going back to read beginners books is it's stuff I haven't thought about in a long time, but also there's always like new opinions coming out about the same things. And like, maybe I can change my mind about something or see it from a new perspective. Yeah. That's part of the reason that I really love the journal prompts because it's things that I hadn't thought about in a while. And even since I started this podcast in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, and my opinions have changed since then. Like mm-hmm. I'm a completely different person than I was. Yeah. Years ago. I've had like so many changes in my life and my practice that going back then to these beginner basic things that I learned before, I might have completely new opinions on them. So I love going through journaling practices any anytime <laughs> they're presented to me. Yeah, that's why it was important to me with at least some of the journal prompts. And I'm talking about like, making your list of witchcraft ethics it was important to me to include like make sure you leave room when you're writing this for um, any growth or times where you change your mind about something because like at the beginning of my practice I was very like um I was curious about like baneful magic and I was kind of into that and now that's not really my thing anymore and like my ethics have completely changed and maybe they'll change again I don't know so that's why I always say like to leave room for your self-growth that's an important part of the practice as well and I think a lot of maybe like when you and I were getting started beginner books were very Wicca based Mm -hmm. and that kind of is like you don't really have you don't really get to have your own opinion on your on your ethics because yeah, Wicca has some rules that you follow within the Wiccan religion, um, and that permeated through a lot of beginner books, even if they weren't called Wicca. I think when, when we were getting started, yeah. books that were published in like the '90s and early 2000s were all all Wicca based. So I like that yours didn't lean in that way. And it's like you need to make up your own mind about things. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like I see a lot of witches going from like a sort of Wicca way of thinking, like harm none, and then getting more into baneful magic. But I feel like it was kind of the opposite for me. It was like I was curious about it and I kind of dabbled in it, or at least maybe not even necessarily baneful, but not um, something that I would do now, like specific, like being uh, doing magic about like specific people, like protections, whatever. 
Um, but I've sort of actually gone back to almost like a Wicca adjacent way of thinking. Although, like, I think it's still totally up to up to the person what they want to believe. Yeah, I think that, I mean, it really depends on what's happening in my life. But yeah. <laughs> I tend to go back and forth. But I think I, I'm definitely not you know, so far on the, the Wicca side, but I do less baneful magic now than I used to be just because mm-hmm. I think I'm like, I grew into like a much more like confident, mouthier person. So when yeah. I, have, I have a problem, I'm just going to nip it in the bud and like tell the person and like just either yeah, deal sometimes with it or, like, cut them like out. That like, is the magic. Yeah. And I, I think that's part of it. And something that came across a few times when I was doing the journaling prompts that I was like, wow, I'm such a different person that like, there's a lot of things that I don't feel that I need magic to help me with. And the Mm -hmm. things I do are not things that I ever thought about maybe like five years ago. Yeah, for sure. So I, I love that. I think there's a lot of self growth and self discovery that can come from your work, even if you are not a beginner. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to ask you outside of the book because you did share a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. but do you have any practices that you are doing now on a more regular basis, whether that's daily, weekly, anything with the moon cycles or anything like that? Hmm. I would say what I've been doing like a little bit differently is that I've been incorporating more charms into my work. Um, I would say that my practice is pretty much like everything is centered around divination pretty much. Um, I don't know if that was ever like a conscious choice or what, but it is. Um, And I saw people doing charm readings. I think it was on TikTok or Instagram. I was like, ooh, like that that seems like it would be fun because I feel like ever since getting into witchcraft and tarot, like I look at my life like as a series of symbols and even looking at spirit signs. Like I feel like I just see the world in a very symbolic way. And doing car- uh, charm casting has just like upped that by a million. And I feel like I just resonate with charm casting so much. Oh, I love that. That's something that recently came on to my radar because I wasn't, I, I've never done it. <laughs> still <laughs> still have not, but I read about it um, in a way that was like presented as throwing bones. And they were like, well, instead of bones, you can actually do like pick out all your own charms and like gather them, you know, everywhere. It doesn't have to be a set of bones. It doesn't have to be a set of crystals. You can do, you know, pretty much anything and mix them all together. And I was like, that's brilliant. And I want to do it. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Before I even like bought my own charms, I just kind of went around my house and picked up little things that I could use. I'm like, Ooh, like this clear quartz crystal, I could keep, could keep, could even be like a bunch of crystals where like you have certain associations with them or just little charms that you already have I actually like took off like some of the pendants from my necklaces that I don't wear anymore and like you can totally just not even buy anything and can just use what you already have which is something that I love about witchcraft yeah that's my absolute favorite because then it's actually personal and means something Mm -hmm. to you it's way more connected with you it's easier to get readings that way yeah Do you think your tarot and oracle deck influenced your move towards more divination? Um, honestly, yeah. (laughs) Because it's like, whenever I would like get the deck after it was printed, I would just use it a ton. And I already love divination, but it's like, I have this thing that's filled with all of my personal symbols, um, my beliefs about, uh, my belief about things. And yeah, I would definitely say they helped me get more into divination. Um, that's, it's nice when your work comes full circle like that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's also nice to hear that from the perspective of the author, because you're like, even you are using your own work. So it's a good product, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best endorsement you have. <laughs> do I mean you put a lot of you know beginner information in the book and a lot of journal prompts but is there anything specifically you would like to point out as tips for beginners who are getting started who haven't picked up your book yet I would say like at the beginning I felt so stressed like as a beginner witch it's like there's so many topics to delve into and just so many uh, like possible paths you can take and there's a lot of pressure to like label yourself which I talk about a little bit in the book but 
Um, if I could give any advice, it would be to start small and to just pick one topic and to just slowly delve into that and let it sort of naturally snowball into the next topic. So if you want your topic to be divination or tarot, um, you can start learning that. And then maybe you can slowly like incorporate crystals into your practice, you know, using amethyst for intuition, things like that, instead of like looking at a mountain of books and be like, oh my God, where do I begin? And then you just don't even want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Good advice. And I think, you know, something that comes across in your works as well, because I think the underlying really theme of your book is self-empowerment, mm -hmm. the witchcraft and really getting to know yourself and what works for you rather than what you're being told or or finding online you don't have to you know collect a bunch of stuff it's all very personal to you yeah I think it's important to remember especially as a beginner that like you make the rules here like you can take advice from all of these books and all of these videos but like at the end of the day it's about you and your practice and I can't, cannot appreciate that enough <laughs> based mm -hmm. on how often, you know, my own practice changes or the different things that I enjoy. And I think that was one of the things that came up during the journaling things. Like I said, of mm -hmm. you know, not doing as much baneful magic anymore because I, you know, feel more confident myself. But there was that theme of self-empowerment and, you know, knowing that I can do like some spell work for even more self-empowerment and confidence. I was like, this is the way I'm mm -hmm. doing it now. Like <laughs> things change. <laughs> yeah. Kind of even like in the writing process, I felt like going back to basics in this way, just, it really helps my practice. And I'm still sort of like going back to basics. Like I just like redid my altar and now it's just like very, not bare, but it's just like going back to basics and being more simple and being more intentional about what I include in my practice. I think that's a beautiful approach for people who have been practicing for a while because you do, you just were, you know, like magpies and we just collect so much stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, like I the like, clutter, like the clutter yeah. can also clutter your practice in a way. And like, it made me not want to practice because it's like, there were so many things in my altar and so many things I could do. But like, instead, like while writing this book, it, it was more about like lighting a candle and saying an affirmation, like that getting back to that simple kind of magic, just like really reawakened my passion for my practice. Absolutely. I think when you sit down at a cluttered altar, it can interfere with, even if you do have a spell in mind and you're going there for a purpose, I think that can really interfere with it because your mind is just wandering to all the things you have to dust. Yeah. And I think I also felt pressured to like, you know, especially the years after being a beginner to like sort of overcomplicate my practice and like do what everyone else is doing. But when it comes down to it, like I am just a simple witch. Like that's just who I am. <laughs> I love that. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I Myself, I'm on a no-spend year, and the main thing I'm not spending on is witchcraft supplies for a reason. <laughs> yeah, like, and I feel like that just works because it's, like, you can just use what you have. And, like, there are so many things, like, um, I write a little bit about, um, like, the sort of universal um, replacement things, like, using clear quartz instead of um whatever crystal that you don't have and I knew that was gonna like ruffle some feathers because I see a lot of talk around the community about maybe we shouldn't be recommending you know clear course for any crystal or a white candle for any candle because like there's more specific things and like more powerful things but I'm like I don't get what is so wrong with being simple like that like if it's my correspondence then that's really all that matters yeah, I agree completely. Even as somebody who is a crystal collector, uh, I feel that way with crystals, herbs, maybe some other things, but I'm like, yes, maybe this more specific form of mint is going to work a little bit better, <laughs> but like mint mm -hmm. is a huge family. I have one, one, you know, peppermint is going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to break it down and get five different types of mint just because one is working a little bit better in a certain scenario. 
Yeah, and for me, it's also, like, overconsumption. I also, like, I'm not in a no-spend year. Maybe I should do that. But <laughs> there's, like, I don't want to just have too much stuff in my regular life and in my witchcraft practice. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I've been decluttering my house, um, but mm-hmm. decluttering my practice as well. And it's really, like, opening my eyes to what I'm actually using and what has been sitting yeah. there untouched since January. Mm -hmm. or even years for me so I know it needs to go when it's been like that yeah there there there's a few things that I've like already been eyeing I don't plan on getting rid of you know too much until like sort of towards the end of the year when I can really make some decisions and figure things out but even just you know doing more introspection in the journaling and following along with a lot of your, you know, simpler <laughs> spells and rituals that are in there. I'm just eyeing stuff on my shelves and I'm like, I don't think you're going to make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you like the journaling so much. We're actually, um, me and my publisher work together to take those journal prompts plus other bits in there, like the tarot prompts and put it into a witchy journal. I don't know if you've got a copy of it, um it's coming out in I think it's June 11th I have so many books coming out this year that I can't keep the uh, release date straight yeah it's called just very simply your magical journal um I've been afraid to write in mine because I only have one and I don't want to mess it up um (laughs) (laughs) but I am so in love with it oh that sounds beautiful no I I have to I definitely have to find that because that sounds perfect I just feel Mm -hmm. like This has been the year of more introspection, and I'm not sure that my witchcraft practice started out that way. I think it was more, you know, outward and doing spells to achieve results and manifesting things, but not so much looking at inner self and roots of the problem. Yeah, I've definitely been like in more of a hermit mode, like definitely going more within, doing more journaling. Yeah, I love hermit mode. It's my favorite mode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of your further, you know, upcoming works, what else are you working on or what do you want to be working on in the future? Oh, what a loaded question. I feel like I'm always <laughs> working on a million things. Um, so, well, the next thing I have out is my Cozy Witch Tarot coloring book. It's my first coloring book. Um, I'm so excited for it. Um, it's all the, um, all the cards show up in there, like in black and white illustrations, as well as the back of the cards. Um, then your magical journal, which we just talked about. Um, and then there's a kid's edition of Make Your Own Magic that's coming out, um, September 29th. And then at the end of the year, I close it out with more poetry, which is really exciting for me because even though I have so many poetry collections out, I haven't had like a new original collection out um, since like 2021 or 2022. And right now I'm actually working on another poetry collection. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Yeah, I just I feel like I'm just I'm always working on something. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's nice, though. It's also impressive and brave to share that with the world because I feel like poetry is so personal. Yeah, mine from the very beginning has been like bearing my soul. And I felt like it was a nice thing to have this break to work on a bunch of witchy things. Because even though I get personal at times, it was nice to just like sort of not bear my soul completely in a work. (laughs) For once. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's tough to share that and then open yourself up to criticism because poetry oh, and there's a ton <laughs> <laughs> poetry is not for everyone and yeah. not everybody you know understands it um, mm. so I, I feel like that's a particularly tough genre to have started in <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> so it's a very brave thing to do and then to even like keep going with it and have another work coming out that's... Yeah, I definitely needed those self-empowerment spells <laughs> <laughs> That explains uh, so much of where the spells in the book came from. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) Uh, I really appreciate that you shared all of that, though, because I know that that's something that's really difficult for people. Mm -hmm. And I have huge respect for 
authors in general, because it's just something I, I know that I could never do. Uh, <laughs> Because I feel like just doing like a podcast is enough. I'm like, that's, that's enough criticism. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, putting all of that work into a book and then reading the, the critics about it. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> Even with all the self empowerment spells, I feel like <laughs> that, would still be, <laughs> that would still be tough for me. So what does your life outside of the works and the poetry look like <laughs> I actually like my I was talking about like being a simple witch but I almost said simple bitch <laughs> because <laughs> that is still totally true like my life is just like I live a very cozy life like I'm all, all about cozy gaming cozy fantasy books like I'm a very simple person I work from home um, you know, I go out for my little coffees and I feel like the kind of life that I live, especially after people have read my poetry collections, is not what they would expect from me. Like, I am just very intense in my poetry collections, but that's like the the inner teenager in me that never got to be like angry or emotional. Um, the adult me is thankfully calm and cozy. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate with that. It's almost like you got your emotions out through your poetry works and then you can go on to live your cozy life. Yeah, it's like after coping with all that trauma, hey, let me just watch The Hobbit over here. <laughs> I, think, I think that resonates with a lot of people, especially after the pandemic and being locked at home. People are like, you know what? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I almost see it as a way of like, um, like inner child work, especially if like you've had trauma in your life, going back and just living a calm, simple life can really just like, feel like taking your life back. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. And I don't think that even poetry has to be everyone's medium for that. There are a lot of ways to do that sort of healing and mm -hmm. end up in a, such a much better place. Yeah. I'm completely with you on the the fantasy books and just the reading and staying home. That's that's my life too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you been reading lately that has nothing to do with witchcraft? I'm just curious. <laughs> oh, well, that's the thing. I feel like I always reach for things that are witchy. I guess the last thing that I really love that I read that was not necessarily like witchcraft, still a little bit of magic was a, it's an indie fantasy book called I think it's a fellowship of bakers and magic it's more like an elf kind of thing and it was like just so well cozy and magical uh the main character is not a witch for once um it was just such a great read and even in the back of the book there were recipes that you could make um because it's like it's based on like those baking competition shows but infused with like hobbit vibes and it was just so cute and so whimsical. Oh, that sounds so nice. Mm. No, I absolutely lean towards like witchy magic themes, even in my fiction fantasy reads. That's always what I'm looking for. And I don't think I ever, like even since I was a kid, ever grew out of that. Because I just, I love it. And then I even like find ways that, that, reflects in real witchcraft or that like ways that I could incorporate some of those things into my mm -hmm. practice it's like just my favorite genre yeah I just I feel like every corner of my life even if it's not witchy I like to find a way to make it witchy yeah I do that too <laughs> and I think that's you know another great lesson that comes across in your book is that it does not have to be complicated and huge rituals that you only save for the full moon it's really daily and like in little bits of your life and you can add it in wherever you want yeah simple as lighting a candle but it doesn't even have to be that you can just say an affirmation it doesn't even have to be out loud it's just whatever you want it to be yeah i do that with my coffee in the morning and i'm like it doesn't oh yeah i the... love coffee spells oh yeah my favorite but it doesn't even feel like a, like witchcraft or like a spell in the moment I think that's just influenced in my mind about like what you see online as like what a spell yeah. would be so like in the moment I don't feel like I'm doing anything witchy but when I look back at it I'm like yes it was a very witchy day 
it's, and there's something beautiful about that too because it's like your magic becomes like this inherent thing that you just infuse everywhere that's always what i'm looking for or or try like i don't want to make it something that i'm trying too hard to I- incorporate or just make my life because it doesn't feel very authentic to me yeah same and then I know the more that I complicate it I just won't do it like (laughs) and then I'll get burned out and then I won't like practice for like months at a time so simple is just like for me in every area of my life I feel that way when I'm reading spell books and just seeing what they have and I flip to something and it's got more than 10 ingredients I don't even read it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's not it it's like if it's not like three to five uh, like I need less than that even but it's, I'm not gonna do it and I know myself <laughs> I cook the same way like if I find a recipe and it's more than 10 ingredients I'm like nope <laughs> it's, not, it's not it it's not for me <laughs> so I think we're very similar in that in our minimalist tendencies <laughs> uh well Amanda, it has been so great talking to you, and I especially appreciate you sharing all about your book, your poetry, your tarot and oracle deck, because I do think that these are really helpful resources for beginners and advanced practitioners alike, especially if you are advanced and feeling like a little bit stuck and maybe things need to change and you don't know what. Um, So I appreciate you chatting about all of your works. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was so fun and magical. And I didn't expect to laugh so much, but this was so much fun. (laughs) It it has been great. I appreciate your fantasy book recommendations too. And I know (laughs) that a lot of listeners are very similar in their reading tastes. (laughs) So I feel like they're going to go out and look for that book as well. Uh, I know that we all love the ones that have the recipes in the back. I think that's such a great aspect to books that more people should do it. Yeah, it's so so cute and whimsical. And whether or not I'll actually make them is another thing, but I love that they're there. Yeah, that's not the point. The point, the point is that they're there. I know I'm going to go look for it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And listeners, I'm going to have everything linked below so you can go find the book or any of Amanda's other works that, that you might be interested in. And thank you again. That is everything that I have for this week. And I will see you all next week. Need even more witchcraft in your life? Subscribe to Witch Wednesdays on Patreon and YouTube for all types of exclusive bonus content like spells, recipes, book reviews, and more, or even order personalized tarot readings and spells. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. And you can find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com. Never lose, come on, baby.